Part 2. Desire and Duty During the months leading up to the coronation of Jael Strongbrew, his mother, Queen Gingerbread Fortadia Strongbrew, oversaw a great cake and tea competition in honor of her late joy. But in doing so, she also worried for her son and hoped that her distraction would give Jael time to come to his senses. However, Jail and Gingerbread had drifted apart and are said to have spoken less with each passing week. Instead, Prince Jail set out to meet with the rulers of neighboring kingdoms. He had hoped to make his small part of the world a place so disgustingly wealthy that rejuvenating the friendships and alliances of his father would take care of themselves in the end. The prospect of not only earning a new respect for all the Vikings of the world, but also the idea that raiding was a good career move, pushed Jael to head out, meet with his neighbors, and say anything to contradict the courtly assumptions of his most unpopular character. Prince Jael traveled by dog sled over snow-covered hills and countryside to pay his respects far and wide. Three days after departing from the territory of the Holy Order of High Priest Lox the Cleanser, Prince Jael was caught in an ugly blizzard. He tried to find shelter among the dense trees of the nearby haunted forest, but instead he found his mind forgetting the chilling and deadly winds, as if some magical force wanted to incapacitate him. It was the dark magic of an evil mage that Prince Jael had not yet met, but who was working on horrible devices alone and in secret. Before the magic knocked him out, Prince Jael managed to huddle under the many blankets of his dog sled and waited out the storm with a very long nap. As he slept, he dreamt of his father being brought back to life. In the dream, the two of them were walking, on the castle ramparts, as the moon turned a scaly green. When Prince Jael finally awoke, the storm had lifted, and the ghost of the old King Jorgen was sitting on an icy tree stump not far away. Prince Jael climbed quickly from the sled and ran to the ghost. The sound of the snow crunching startled the ghost, and in doing so, the ghost jumped to its feet, farted in Jael's general direction, and disappeared, laughing hysterically. Now, this particular omen was traditionally considered to be one of the grimmest and darkest in the land, but whenever it happens, the subject is often so shocked, they instantly forget what has happened and cannot heed the omen's message. Prince Jair was baffled, but for some reason, he held on to the odor of the fart. This mild mix of protoplasm and a ham sandwich was more than an omen, however was a warning that the evil mage's work had been disturbed and would set a curse on Jael out of blind spite. So it was with care that Jael continued his diplomatic travels, fearful of the doom that would be waiting for him around any corner on his trip home, or maybe even forevermore thereafter. His dialogues with the neighboring rulers had yielded continued docility but no one wanted to return to the old ways at all. On top of that, the major tradable commodity of Jill's kingdom, tea, had lost its popularity considerably, as warm milk with honey had become the new fashionable drink. If Jail couldn't come up with something else, something new, his kingdom could hope to decline into nothing, like so many that had tried to survive on the Viking coast. Until then, it would only have its closest friends to invite to banquets and ice skating competitions. The kingdom of Fortadia would, of course, oblige these pleasantries, as their princess, Gingerbread, had married King Jorgen to become Queen Gingerbread. But other than that, only Senator Osmond and his mirthful dwarven folk could be counted on to respond. A letter from Prince Jail to his cousin, Duke Hilbert Tinklespot, contains evidence of how the situation looked to him at the time. 
dearest cousin, Duke Hilbert Tinklespot. I had a parlay with my neighbors, but no one likes me anymore. Where did I go wrong? What's this talk of a dead tea market? Have you tried warm milk with honey? I can't stand it. That slush puts me to sleep when I want to get out and cause a scene, mix things up, and have an adventure. You know a few sea captains, don't you? Maybe I could join them for an expedition some day if you thought they'd be up to it. I'll start growing my mustache now, just in case, eh? At least we can always count on the dwarves. Nothing cheers me up like listening to the Silver Knuckle Choir sing when we visit for the Winter Festival. I guess the dwarves like everyone, and everyone likes the dwarves. Maybe I'm sad that nothing makes me special. We'll have to get together soon and make some smoked mutton cheek jerky soup like old times. See you at the coronation, Prince Jail Strongbrook.